Welcome everyone, I'm Erogai Sensei, bringing you the news and reviews of battle games. Today I'm reviewing a small game called Panophobia, made by Blackstain. Panophobia is an adult 2D side-scrolling horror-themed stealth game with minor puzzle elements mixed in. With little to no story to get you started, upon pressing play, your character wakes up from a prison infested with monsters. Taking the control of a random girl dressed in a blue skirt, it is your objective to get from point A to point B without being caught. What lured me in to try this game out was the grim world with decent looking art style followed by sneaky mechanics that the demo demonstrated well enough for me to make the choice to purchase the full game. It knows how to sell itself, but perhaps too well, as the experience looks more fun than it actually plays. Though the game may appear somewhat grotesque, you should know that Panophobia does not offer any guru based hentai, nor does it try to be true horror in any shape or form. There's no jump scares or shocking images, it doesn't try to disgust or scare you, it simply uses the horror as a theme and nothing more. This is fine by me because the game can actually be somewhat thrilling at times when the so-called special monsters step in. For lack of a better word for them, every level has some kind of monster that tries to chase you down as a final enemy. Whether it is running away from a giant monster or sneaking within the range of light provided by a strange creature, these are the sections where the game shines best and though not scary, it felt thrilling for the first time I played them. Unfortunately, they are bittersweet moments to enjoy because they don't last that long. Most of the game is sneaking past enemies and hiding behind objects and though this may sound fun at first, sadly it gets repetitive and tedious very quickly. I found myself standing still or behind objects more than actually moving. Of course, this is the very element of stealth, but it wasn't a fun kind of stealth. With every two steps there was always something to slow me down and force me to stand still for the sake of prolonging the game that is so short that by the time you finish it, you are shocked by the fact how little there was actual gameplay. There's no variety in sneaking, you might be crouching behind tall grass or hiding behind a box or a chair or inside a locker or casket, but ultimately it's all the same in the end. I would have hoped to see more creative ways to sneak past the enemies on each level, but it pretty much stays the same throughout the entire game. The game doesn't try to hide the fact that it really doesn't care for its stealth that much. You can stand behind objects that reveal most of your body and the enemies will pretend like they don't see you. You can even run behind most of the enemies, making all kinds of noise and they just continue to walk their scripted paths like you didn't exist. I've mastered the ability of standing so incredibly still that I've become invisible to the eye. As soon as I realized this, it pretty much sucked out all the fun from the stealth, making me just try to rush the levels because if the enemies don't bother, why should I? While the stealth system is pretty much the whole game, there are elements that spice up the boring routine. I was quite impressed with the final level as it appeared to be the only level in the game that actually showed what the rest of the game should have been. It offered multiple floors and rooms to explore, with keys to be collected and puzzle items to be used in a clever way to deal with the enemies. There was nothing like this in other levels, which only made me think like the developer had just figured out how the game should have been made. Putting the stealth aside, what else does the game have to offer? Well, there's a very small story, with somewhat clever ending tied to Blackstain's older game, Hospital of the Dead, but it's nothing to run home about. It's mostly non-existing throughout the game and really boring to read. The game could easily exist without it while telling the same story by show and don't tell style of gameplay through levels that are connected to what the character is going through. But of course it doesn't. The levels and monsters have nothing to do with the story, a huge missed opportunity to actually keep the player interested to know what's going on in this twisted dark world. It's not all that bad though. I do want to give some praise for the sound design. While it doesn't save the game overall, there are moments where the sounds can reach a point of downright creepy level, earning the game its horror title. As this is an adult game, of course there's a hentai aspect for me to consider if it can enhance the experience to make it worth your time. In Panophobia, you hide and run away from enemies and a single hit will bring you down if the enemy catches you. This will start game over hentai for you to enjoy. There's subtle animations and something I would call a little above decent looking sex scenes between your character and the monsters. While this always boils down to taste, I myself found only a couple scenes interesting enough to raise my hat for the developer, but the rest, though not terrible, did not live up to my expectations. There's a total of 26 hentai scenes for you to enjoy, from which there are 11 unique monsters. Every monster in the game is part of the hentai scenes, so simply by looking at the gameplay footage, you get the picture what kind of hentai the game has to offer. 
Upon completing the game, you unlock the gallery, and luckily you are not forced to lose to each new monster to unlock individual scenes during gameplay. While the hentai alone does not give enough reason to play the game, it does make things a little bit interesting at least. Despite much of the negative talk I give the game, strangely enough, I did enjoy the overall experience. It's nothing amazing by any means, but it doesn't have to be. There are elements here and there that get me around long enough to see the ending. When everything is said and done, I only wish that the game would have been longer, because for the price it stands at today, it's pretty expensive in my opinion. The game costs a little about $10 and you can beat it in less than an hour. I managed to beat it in 30 minutes and you can just imagine what else you could buy with that money that lasts longer and is more polished experience. Now if the game had been spectacular from start to finish, I could justify the price, because then I would treat it as a unique luxury experience, but the way it handles itself feels mostly cheap and makes me think the developer felt just a little bit greedy with this one. If it had been $3 or so, that would be ideal price to pay for this game, but anything above and now I have to start to judge it on a more critical level, something that it simply cannot win because it was built to be a very short mediocre experience. I hope that Blackstain will consider to drop the price to match the game's true value, but before that happens, I cannot bring myself to recommend this game for you. I wish I could, because it's a decent game, but the high price manages to ruin what is a very short experience. And with that said, I thank you for watching my review of Panophobia. If you want to see more reviews from me, check out my channel. But before you go, don't forget to drop a comment and hit that like button. It really helps me a lot. If you are new here, hit subscribe and the bell icon to keep up with all sorts of adult games out there. Know that if you have an adult game or a film or a manga you want me to review, I'm all ears for suggestions. And finally, if you want to support the show on Patreon, there's a link in the description. I've just now began to offer exclusive adult game recommendations and reviews there, so definitely consider throwing a dollar or two if you don't want to miss any good games worth to play. Now with everything said and done, I will see you in the next video.